Well, now to the Vatican, where the world is watching every move the newly elected pope makes, looking for signs of what to expect from his papacy. Dignitaries will gather in Vatican City Tuesday for Francis I's installation mass, and our Ron Claiborne is there with the latest. Good morning, Ron. Hey there, Bianca. Well, that inaugural mass on Tuesday, that's the big event with a lot of pomp and pageantry today. This morning, just a short while ago, something a little less ornate, the thousands of journalists here in Rome to cover the selection of the Pope were invited to an audience with the new Pope. He acknowledged all the hard work that journalists have done. Never uh, a bad idea. He also talked a little bit about how and why he chose the name Francis. No questions were allowed. This was, after all, a papal audience, not a press conference. Mi bacio. In brief remarks, the Pope said he chose the name Francis because of his concern for the poor. The poor, the poor, he said. It was just one more sign that Pope Francis intends to be more accessible and more informal than past pontiffs. From the moment he said, I will be called Francis, that was a signal. And all the rest are very small but significant signals. When he left his guest house, the new pope paid his own bill. When he left the Sistine Chapel after being elected pope, he chose to ride in a minivan with other cardinals instead of in the papal limousine. Even his shoes, regular black ones, not the expensive leather red shoes that Pope Benedict favored. The new down-to-earth pontiff has also been working the phones. He called a Jesuit resident in Rome to thank the director for his congratulatory letter but the employee who answered didn't believe it was really the Pope. Seriously, the Pope said, it's Pope Francis. When he called a married couple, friends in Rome, their 10-year-old son answered. Mom, Dad, the boy called out, it's the Pope. But the papal charm couldn't stop a swirling controversy. Accusations that 30-plus years ago, he failed to denounce the jailing and killing of thousands of political opponents of the military government that ruled his native Argentina. The charges drew a forceful Vatican denial. There has never been an accusation concrete or credible in his regard. The Vatican said the future pope actually protected many dissidents from persecution. But it's very unlikely that controversy is going to go, go away anytime soon. But for now, the pope, the new pope, is enjoying an extraordinary honeymoon. At the end of the event this morning, he got huge applause from this audience of journalists. Also, he uh, selected a number of people from the audience to come up for a, a blessing and a brief greeting. Among them, a blind man who was there with his dog. The Pope reached down and touched and petted the dog. Also, our own Phoebe Nattinson, our Rome producer and longtime uh, Vatican follower. I had a chance to meet and speak very briefly uh, with the new Pope Francis. Now, tomorrow, we're expecting a large crowd here in St. Peter's Square as the brand new Pope Francis holds his first Angelus prayer service and his first public remarks since last Wednesday night when he stood on the balcony there behind me and he was announced as the new pope. Back to you, Biana. What a sight that was. Such a modest man. I love that he had to convince people that that was actually him calling on the phone. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ron, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. And we'll have complete coverage of the installation of Pope Francis Tuesday here on ABC.